Welcome back to Anno 1800. And a bit of editorializing up front, and full disclaimers apply to this. This is just my humble opinion and all that. <laughs> Feel free to disagree with me. In fact, I encourage you to disagree with me. Do, some, do so in the comments, and we'll get a lively discussion going here. But with all that said, I would aver that there seems to be a right way and a wrong way to play Anno 1800. I mean, this is something that can probably be said about most games, if we're being honest. But as a casualish player myself, and who often likes to pursue my own sort of idiosyncratic goals, largely because I just don't have the time or the willingness to get into the end game, I, I've just been feeling it a bit more keenly here, I think. And to be clear, I'm just going to be talking about Workforce today, though I think you could probably apply this to a few of the different game systems, but uh, I'm not going to get into that, and let's just talk about this one thing for now. So, Anno 1800 takes a carrot and a stick approach to developing your empire specifically your islands individually. So for the carrot, you've got the fact that progression is heavily gated through unlocks which arrive at certain population milestones, right? So uh, the next tier is always displayed up here on your island population bubble, as you can see right now. I'm going to get some more stuff when I upgrade to artisans. The build menu below also shows you specifically what will unlock at the next level. And if I'm being honest, these are designed organically, and I think they do function really well, but clearly you are being challenged to hit certain marks, and that can feel somewhat arbitrary sometimes, especially if you're kind of an obsessive planner like I am, uh, and you just want to figure things out all up front, or if you kind of prefer sandboxes as opposed to sort of campaign progression gameplay. But largely, okay, I'm fine with that. It's really just the stick that I'm a little bit less sure about. In a previous video, I said that you should just build more homes whenever in doubt. So uh, this is the part where I'm going to place a hard caveat on that statement. I, mean, I think it's true in a lot of cases, but, uh, but getting to the theme of these videos that I make, so what I wish I knew when I began playing in Anno 1800, in short, what I wish I had known is that resource satisfaction is based upon tipping points. So you probably already realize that, that the amount of laborers you have living in any particular home is determined by your ability to, ability to satisfy their resource requirements. But how do you know how much stuff to provide to them? This isn't really advertised in the game, at least at this time, and I had to dig this up in external sources. So, for example, a fishery will feed 800 farmers or workers, I believe. A slaughterhouse produces sausages for about a thousand workers, this sort of thing. and. You get a tiny amount of leeway here and there, I think, but at the end of the day, when you pass the tipping point, things can go to hell pretty quickly. So, because resource satisfaction is directly linked to citizen retention, uh, when you fail to satisfy those needs, you're going to see people start jumping ship real fast. And uh, suddenly you've got across the board worker shortages and inefficiency, which can kind of quickly become a spiral of decay unless you go into crisis management mode. So. Yeah, you can just build another slaughterhouse or whatever, but because production buildings are often relatively expensive in terms of both upkeep and manpower, not to mention you've got to find space for another building, you're going to ask yourself, is it really worth it? Especially just to you know feed a few extra people. Heck yes, you say. <laughs> this game isn't going to tell me that I cannot have an island of 5,000 farmers. And I, that's kind of where I was too, because, you know, I... I have weird goals, as I said. Maybe I want an island that's completely agrarian and never attempts to achieve anything great with itself. So what you'll discover pretty quickly is the game is going to tell you that you can't do that through the royal taxes system. So TLDR on this is that the developers made it very expensive for you to have more than a thousand citizens of any tier. And we can see that in that in this game where I've got a worker population just on the verge. If I build this school, for example, you're going to see that it will immediately attract a couple of extra workers into each household, and that's going to put me slightly over the 1,000 mark, at which point the crown comes in and begins immediately taking its piece. So honestly, a little bit of spillover. It's it's not going to ruin you, but from what I've seen, these royal taxes can mount up real fast. Basically, the tipping point on need fulfillment was your warning from the game to kind <laughs> of slow your roll, and the royal taxes are like, oh hey, you've officially gone too far, you've had your fun, we're putting our foot down. <laughs> the upshot of this is that you just can't do everything on one island, and that's by design, admittedly. 
is it a good design or a bad design? That part is up to you to decide. So just a thought, feel free to let me know in the comments or to expound upon what I've glossed over in this probably too lengthy already video. And if there was anything here that you liked, well, clicking the thumbs up icon, it never hurt anybody. But in the meantime, thanks for watching. Now go forth, conquer, and as always, have fun playing games your way, if it's allowed by the game.